In this video, we will go over Encounter 2 of the Vow Disciple Raid, which is also called Collection, but some people call it Caretaker after the name of the boss you have to clear within this encounter. This encounter is going to require you to do the same items you've done with glyphs and being able to communicate and shoot glyphs, but also it's very similar to the Golgoroth encounter within Destiny 1's Taken King Raid. And again, like all of my other raid guides, I want to put this together in a way where it's clear to casual players, but is not too detailed in that it's a very, very long video. And hopefully I achieve those aims. So first off, let's talk about the room layout and areas. So when you start out, you're going to be on the first floor of the encounter. One of the things you'll notice is that it's obviously a floor, which doesn't have a lot of holes in it. That will change you go up. You'll notice that there's an obelisk on one side with a door next to it. The obelisk over time will develop symbols that you will have to shoot, and the door will have the same cruxes that you have to shoot. You also do this to actually start the encounter. And of course, near there, there'll be a raid banner. As you move around the room, there will also be plates that eventually will be used for DPS against the boss, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. As you advance the encounter, you'll notice over time that stairs will drop down as you finish each phase of the encounter and you will go up. So you keep going up and in each area as you go up, there'll be more holes and more areas you can fall down on the main floor, but also in the inside room, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, where you'll be actually looking and trying to find the correct glyphs that you need. So now let's talk about roles. The roles in this encounter are first you need two people who are going to stay near the boss and stun him. So think similar to Golgoroth, except in this case, you're stunning in front and back. You'll have two people with weapons that can easily do some burst damage. So things like auto rifles or submachine guns would be good. And you will take turns, the two people, shooting his front and shooting his back to keep him stunned. The whole point of this is you're trying to keep him from getting to the center of the map and be able to get to the DPS plates. That's your primary role. In addition, there'll be a bunch of ads that spawn. So you'll have two people in the room that are basically dealing with ads. The people who are stunning can also help out with this from time to time. The big goal obviously is to stop the spawns because especially when you have a lot of it taken, if you don't deal with the spawns quickly, you'll be quickly overwhelmed with those enemies. The final two folks on the fire team are gonna be runners. And again, that's to be consistent with my other guides. You may call them something different. Their role is to go in, find glyphs, read them out to the other runner that's on the outside, come back out and shoot the glyphs that are on the obelisk. Obviously during all of this, everyone can help out as far as ad clear when they have a free moment. And there are worms that are constantly being pumped out of the boss that they're not as dangerous, for instance, as like the Seekers that are at Morgith or anything like that. But they can do damage. So those are things if you have a free moment, try to help your fire team with. Obviously, add clear and the stun is, are fairly easy to understand as far as mechanics and as far as what those portions of the fire team do. So I'm going to dig in a little bit more into the runner role and kind of explain that because really the key to this encounter is having runners who can be efficient and quick because if you don't, that's the quickest way to wipe your fire team. So one person at the beginning is gonna run in. Obviously you open up the doors and one person's gonna run in and they're going to try to find three glyphs. That's all they can get. So what to do that, they just run through the glyphs and they look at them, they read them out to the other runner that's on the outside. Obviously, that's why reps and practice are going to help and having a common definition of what the glyphs mean is really going to be important. So while you're in that area, you're going to get that effect that you've had in other parts of the raid where you get times 10, you die. If you die when you're inside, you will actually lose the glyphs that you read out to your other fire team member and they will have to come back in. They'll have to res you and they'll have to come back in. So it's important not to die. There are ads that are in there. We didn't really spend a lot of time trying to kill them. In contest mode, this was obviously more difficult because they hit a little bit harder. During the regular runs of the raid, especially if you're wearing a hunter and go invisible, though, which is what I did, it should be fairly easy. So pick up those three glyphs, obviously read them out to the person on the other side. The person on the other side, who's in the main room, their primary job is to read and find those glyphs. So they're gonna look on the obelisk and they're gonna determine, you know, one's on this side, one's on this side, two on this side. If you get really lucky, it's happened to us, you have three on one, right? And what they're gonna probably do, because again, the person coming out is gonna be blind or is gonna be disoriented or is not gonna know where they're going when they first come out. Their primary job is to probably find two that they can shoot fairly easily 
and then find either one or two that are on the side, hopefully that's close to where the person's coming out, and just say, hey, I got these, you shoot this one or these two, right? That's really their primary role, and they have to be really quick about that. So obviously you can help out with ad clear and other things, but you need to be focused if you wanna do this quickly. One of the reasons for that is as you come out of the room, a message is gonna appear on your HUD that's gonna tell you that at that point, that person can begin shooting their glyphs. If you don't do this quickly, what's gonna happen is your offer is gonna be rejected and you're gonna to have to go back in, the other person, the runner who has stayed in the main room is gonna to have to go back in and start the process all over. The problem is, as you're doing that, the boss is continuing to come up through the room. So the longer this takes, the more chance you have to wipe. If you shoot the wrong glyphs, the same thing will happen, you'll be rejected. So it's very important, obviously do it quickly, but to make sure you're shooting the correct ones, I would recommend for something like this, I use funnel web, anything that is easy to control that you can do some quick burst shots because sometimes the one shot, it's similar if you think about it, like when you were shooting the things on the Leviathan raid, right? It's similar to that in that maybe the first shot doesn't register. So make sure it's something you can put a few shots, but something that's easily controllable. Once you do that, because you will probably at that point have some of the darkness effect on you, you'll want to send the other person on the fire team in and they will go in and they will find their glyphs and then you just alternate. It is key to try to get three glyphs every time. However, if for some reason you're getting close to the end of your darkness buff, so in other words, you're gonna die inside, it's more important to take two or one or whatever you have, come out and shoot it. There is a risk that you could potentially wipe because it's gonna take longer, but it's better to do that than have your fire team member die and lose the glyphs that they've already claimed. As you get more of the glyphs off, it will become a lot easier because there's only nine glyphs on the obelisk. And you'll notice the ones that are finished show like a like a black dot on them. So it makes it easier. In fact, if you've done it correctly, for the last three, so basically you had one person go in, you alternated, then you have your basically the person started goes back in again. If you go in, since there's only three left, you don't even have to memorize them. Just pick them up, come out, and you guys shoot everything, right? So that part makes that a little bit easier if you've consistently got three every time. Since we're talking about this role, I want to talk about this before we get to, to the DPS or how we stage up and get up to the other uh, floors in the encounter. As you go up all the other floors, one thing you're going to notice in this area is that you will have additional holes. So the first floor, no holes. Second floor, you start to see holes. You have to be more careful. Third floor, there's a ton of holes. And there's like entire areas missing where you could basically have to jump from area to area. So one thing to keep in mind, if you're running a hunter, for instance, you can do it without it, but it makes it easier, especially if you haven't memorized the area. Go ahead, when you're going up between the second and third floors, go ahead and put stompies on. If you're running a warlock and titan, you should be fine. But that will give you the extra confidence to be able to get the glyphs properly documented. So now that we understand the roles, let's talk about how this encounter goes into phases. So once you're finished and you get all nine of your glyphs documented and you get those shot in, at that point, you're going to come to DPS phase. Now, the way DPS works, it's similar to Kallus in Leviathan if you played that raid in the past. The boss that's walking, whatever path he's taken, he's going to try to go over three plates. He's going to basically allow you to activate three plates that are in that path. Now, because of just timing in the encounter and, you know, you're dealing with a multiplayer game where people have multiple connections, your host, you don't know how far away they are from you. One thing I would recommend, even when you see the plate light up, is wait a second, especially, you know, if you're still playing this in contest mode when I post this, you want to get the most DPS as possible. I would wait before you start really shooting for your, your big weapons but at, the first, at the first plate until you know that you're actually doing damage because sometimes it can take a little bit. So what I do, I take like my funnel web or something small, I'll kind of shoot him for a little bit until I see numbers start showing up and then I'll pound him with my heavy weapons, my supers and things like that. That will allow you to maximize your DPS. So you do that on the first plate, then you hop over to the second plate, do the same thing. You hop over to the third plate, that's DPS phase. Once you finish a damage phase, basically stairs will show up and you'll go up to a second and then a third floor. And again, I'll talk about those in a second. But what I'd like to talk about first is what you need to do with supers and weapons, especially if you're in contest mode. After this, it might not be as relevant, but I think it's really important because one of the things with this encounter is ammo economy is really, really poor. In fact, if you're still in contest mode, you can even use the, the trick 
where you basically put a flag in, get full, wipe, and then basically time starting the encounter putting a flag in, that helped my fire team quite a bit. For weapons and supers, I would primarily, obviously, well is good for damage buff. Using the Titan Barrier Shield is also gonna help buff your DPS. Linear Fusion Rifles for ammo economy work really well. The only issue is that um, hitting his crit spot is very difficult. I know some people say it's not. It is very difficult, especially if you're moving around or he's moving around because he will go behind pillars and things like that. So if you're gonna use that strategy, a Divinity probably would help. Also, rockets like Galahorn are probably good. What I did for my run, because I'm just a terrible shot, is I use Galahorn, I use Funnel Web, and I use a Sniper on my primary, just so that, you know, if I ran out of ammo, that I could basically continue to shoot the enemy. The other thing with this encounter is ammo economy is terrible. And this is primarily because we're playing it right now in contest mode. During the regular fight, when you're doing this, this is probably a two-phase encounter. A two-phase with uh, Last Stand. But you're probably going to have a little more ammo you have in this case. So one of the things you're going to keep in mind is as you get towards the end, especially because you want to save up for your last stand and you want to conserve your su supers as much as possible, you're going to want to conserve conserve your heavy as you get out of that third phase and get ready for your final stand, is that having a primary you can swap over to, something like an Outbreak Perfected or something like that, is probably going to be real helpful if you run out of ammo because primaries have unlimited ammo. So just keep those on your character in case you need them. So again, you're going to do this on the first floor, then the second floor, then the third floor. After that, instead of having a rage mechanic, they have a last stand. On the last stand, once you get through the three phases, regardless if you've gotten him to that mark that says last stand, you're going to have to do the amount of damage. That's, so if you have the last stand damage plus a little bit extra, that's just additional damage that you're going to need to, to put into him to basically finish him. Once you get up that final stair, he's going to be all the way at the end of the room, and you're going to have three plates. The three plates get increasingly closer to him, which obviously is more dangerous. Once you finish those three plates, if you have not killed him, you will wipe the encounter. And there's been reports of some people not getting the final chest if they take too long to do damage to him during this part of the encounter. But that's basically at this point. Do damage, finish him off, and then you get your loot. So from an encounter perspective, this is a, actually, this is my favorite encounter so far in the raid that I've played. It's very frenetic. There's a ton of action. I always love very active encounters where, while it's a challenge, there's a lot of communication, clear communication. Things like, if I think about Axis Phase 2 within Wrath of the Machine, those are some of my favorite encounters because there's a lot of action. There's a lot of chance for hero moments. There were many times as we were playing where we had to res someone and someone had to go back in to get glyphs or just some really clutch moments that can occur within this encounter. So to me, after the previous encounter, which I think eventually once we get off contest mode will be a lot easier, it's kind of a slog. And I think after we get off contest mode, it's gonna be kind of boring, right? So I think it's gonna be either or. But this encounter, I think, will continue to be a fun encounter that people will enjoy. That's the video, guys. If you enjoyed it, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, jump my Discord, and I'll see you, Guardians in the Tower.